Hey everyone, it's Jessica Michaels here with another video for a Cherry on Top Crafts, and today I'm making a card. So, <laughs> I'm sure you can hear my roosters in the background right now. They are crowing up a storm, but I am using some card making supplies from the shop, and I pulled out this die from Dress My Craft, and it's got some various scalloped edges. So, I'm just running that through here on this beautiful blue shade of paper from 49 and Market Wherever Collection. I've already already cut my card base down from an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So it measures eight and a half by five and a half and then I've just folded it in half. And then I have my die here that I just ran through my big shots and I'm going to be using both pieces of that. So I'm gonna actually pop up the middle and place a circle element on and behind it. So I've got an, um, a fish kind of stamp here that I'm going to be using today. And I think it's called an angler fish if I remember right. And I wanted to create like a light zone for it since that has a little light on the fish. And I just decided to cut out a circle out of my card front. And then I'm cutting out a bigger circle out of the yellow here to go behind it. So I'm just using that to mat it and um, I have a magic mat for my Big Shot machine, so you saw I have an extra layer in there because um, I use a couple pieces of cardstock to shim that being I use it with the magic mat and my magnetic platform. I've got my stamping platform here that I just got in the mail the other day. It's by Tim Holtz, and I'm just going to use it here for the first time in this video, and I really like it. Um, I did run into a little issue. It's just a little bit of a learning curve. Um, it works great on this side whenever you stamp with rubber stamps because they're a little bit thicker. But when I switch over to the clear stamp here, these are the clear stamps by Lawn Fawn and they do sell the coordinating die as well. So I'll link it below. Um, I think this one's called the Angler Fish. But when I switched over to these clear ones, which are a lot thinner, I was having issues because apparently you need to flip this lid. It, whenever you lay it down flat like that, you can just pull it out and flip it. And that changes the depth itself on that clear piece so that you can stamp the clear stamps on there. But I didn't know that at the time until a couple of my friends pointed it out whenever I was asking them about it. And that's what their recommendation was. So if you have issues with that and the depth, you just need to flip that lid over. I'm going to actually pull out some embossing powder and some Versamark ink. I decided to actually emboss these elements instead of stamping them anyways. So kind of my stamping earlier was a little bit irrelevant because I decided to do this, but I figured I would keep that all in the video so you can kind of see my process and how I made this and my little bumps along the way. But um, that's what makes our creative process creative, right? So I've just stamped this with some Versamark ink and then put some embossing powder from my stash on there. Mine's like a glittery black and just using my heat gun now to actually activate that embossing powder and set that in there. And then I'm going to pull out the coordinating dies that go with this Lawn Fawn stamp set. I hate fussy cutting out so I love that it comes with the coordinating dies to cut these guys out. So I'm just going to trim off my wordy bits. I ended up losing the one <laughs> the one strip at some point during this video. Um, so I did something different there at the end too. But here's where I have another little whoopsie moment. I ran this through thinking I could just cut it all out and I didn't have to trim the dies individually and not realizing that there's a circle little bubble in um, the inside of that fish. So I cut his complete face off. I don't know. I, I just cut him apart unintentionally, of course, but <laughs> I ended up having to redo him and make another little fish, but it's okay. This one actually turned out nicer with the embossing powder anyways, so I'm happy with him. So here I'm just heating that up again, making another little fishy, and I'm going to cut my dies apart this time and run him back through my manual die cutting machine that is, as you can see, well loved. I have used it for so long and it still works, but it's cosmetically very much well loved. Here I'm just going to pull out some Copic markers and color this little guy in. I just think he's so adorable. I know they're kind of supposed to be scary fish. At least they are in the Finding Nemo movie, but I just think he's adorable. And I wanted to make him kind of like an orangey yellowish shade. 
um, when I googled these fish to see actually what color they really were, that's kind of what came up was like a really odd lighted orangish yellow color. I mean like the light is. So that's what I decided to color him in as. So I'm just going to distress the edges of my circle using my edge distressor. And I've got my larger circle here cut out from this beautiful yellow pattern paper. It's actually from the Anchors Away collection by Photoplay. It's a newer one in the shop. So I've grabbed that beautiful yellow paper to place behind here to make it look like it's lit up like his light is lighting it. So I just thought he's super cute. I just love him. And I love this card. Um, it's actually, I think you saw the sentiment earlier whenever I stamped it at the very beginning, but it's going to be a birthday card. I have a lot of summer birthdays coming up, so I needed to make some cards for all of these. Um, I'm just going to pop this part up on the front side of my card so that it has a little bit of dimension. And so it pops up a little bit from the fish guy in the middle. So I'm just peeling off the backing strips here. I'm using some 3D foam tape just for that. And there's my little fish guy. So I'm actually going to um, stamp a little light kind of some little lines here. This actually comes in the stamp set along with him, but it just makes it look like his little light is projecting. So I stamped that there with some black archival ink. And then I'm gonna place him about right there, but I'm gonna grab these little wobble things. They're like little springs, and they're really nice to put behind these little um, animals and shapes and things on your cards. It just puts that little spring in there. It's like a spring in their step, but <laughs> I know I'm cheesy, but I can't help it. You guys love me, but I am placing that behind that guy. So he's on a little spring and it just makes it extra fun. I'm just going to add a little bit of the deluxe Nouveau adhesive here at this point to actually glue down my little frame to the outside. It's going to finish that off nicely. I love the way that that looks. I've got my sentiment here. I can go ahead and place down at this point. And then my little guy on his little spring. I had a little bit of trouble peeling off the backing pieces, so I just grabbed my tweezers and then it came off just fine. But I just love him. I think he's just super adorable and I love how he turned out. I think this is gonna be a really fun card to give as a birthday gift. So super sweet. I still felt like it was missing a little something though. So I ended up adding some um, little, kind of looks like bubbles. So I wanted them to look like bubbles on here. These are just some clear finishing touches. Um, I believe there's some in the shop too. I'll see if I can get a link for you in the description for them. If I remember, if I don't remember, just remind me in the comments and I'll try to link it up for you. But I've got these little clear things I like to use with my sequin tool to pop them down along with this Nouveau glue. And they're just very easy to apply and it just looks like cute little bubbles. And then still missing something here. So I'm adding some white gel pen design, just some little doodle lines um, along the side. And then my last thing that I'm going to add, because I still feel like it's missing at some point. I don't typically do plain designs, so I really felt like I needed to add a lot of things to this to make it feel complete for me. So I ended up pulling out just some white acrylic paint as well and adding some splatters. So... Um, You'll see that here in a moment, and I'm actually adding these little stamps to the inside as well. These are just by Studio Calico. That's an older set that I got a little while ago, and then I'm adding my stamp to the back as well. I like to add a little stamp on the back just so that people know that it's homemade. And then here's my white splatters. I wish I would have had my camera zoomed in this far for my whole video because you can see it a little bit better whenever it's closer. But that's just some watered down white acrylic paint to do my splatters with a paintbrush. Here's the finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed this process today and enjoyed creating with me. And I hope I've inspired you. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.